Good morning to day nine of the Lofoten crossing. Coffee is already ready. Oh, with nature. <laughs> Porridge is waiting there. And socks are waiting to get dry, but not working, of course. Yeah, night was very good. Very. What a difference it makes if you have a kind of flat spot, yeah? So slept very well. Nothing was moving, not to the left, not to, not to the right. Sometimes you think you have a flat spot, but then you wake up in the middle of the night and realize uh, something of my body moves or shifts into a certain direction. And over a period of eight hours, that can be very annoying. So I slept very well. Uh, of course, in late evening, heard some voices. I think three times people came by. I think, I don't know what direction I went. I assume they came back from watching the sunset at the beach. But other than that, no special things happened. Yeah, I'm going to have my breakfast here now. <laughs> Pack together my tent. Get ready for a day nine hike. Quick look at the lake here. Beautiful. Yeah, what a great camp spot. I'm glad I picked it. Whew. Let's eat. Okay, put everything together, leave no trace, leave no footprint, but it's not so possible here because there's a fireplace. <laughs> okay, good timing because it just drizzled, started drizzling a little bit, but the tent was pretty wet to be honest, inside and outside, well, inside and outside of the, the cover, yeah. Must be all condensation water. Interesting. Okay, let's head to the trail up there to the rock. Bye bye, camp spot. It was nice. Thank you for accommodating us. Us? <laughs> accommodating me. Indirectly, you too, because you watched me being accommodated. Okay, houses. Yep, we're going to the road down there now. Like I already mentioned, slept very well. Uh, the pain in my leg was not so bad this night, but I treated it with a cream, with a pain cream, before I went sleeping, before I went into the sleeping bag, so maybe that helped a little bit. There was some pain, but not so bad than, than the, the night before. Mm. Also, no special injury here, just the usual scratches, getting more and more scratches on my legs, on my on my arms from from bushes, whoops, from bushes or from falling, slipping. Uh, shoes, of course, did not dry. Socks did not dry. 
from yesterday's step <laughs> into the ocean water. But it's okay, yeah, it's like it's not soaking wet anymore. Uh, I had one clean pair of socks, I'm wearing them now for a moment. I wasn't sure if I should continue wearing the socks from yesterday, the ones that are, that are a little bit wet and not dry yet, or if I should start uh, with completely fresh socks. Because it's clear that the fresh socks in the wet boots get also a bit wet now, but the moment I don't feel anything, it feels, feels pretty dry. So I think it was the better decision to have the feet always as dry as possible. And that means if you have a dry pair of socks and wet boots, then better wear the dry socks and the wet shoes. That's my lesson now. Because if I had put on the wet socks, the overall moisture in the shoe would be higher. Yeah? Does it make sense? Makes sense to me. Oh, and by the way, uh, the drone flight yesterday above the lake. Uh, the lake is not in the national park. Yeah, it's the first lake outside of the national park. There were no people, it's not national park, so it was totally allowed. Yeah, I just, before someone starts commenting, eh, he started his drone in the national park. <laughs> no, you would never do that, would you? Here we are at the road. This car there <laughs> looks like a little gravel road. We'll walk that direction now to the end and then that the end of that road would have been the end of yesterday's hike. So it's three kilometers from where I camped. And then the real day nine starts. I will let you know about day nine then when we arrive at the start of day nine. Grizzling continued, so I decided to put on the rain cover and rain jacket because it's going to be another two kilometers along the road and if it accumulates all the water on the backpack and on the t-shirt, it's not nice. It's not too warm, so it's okay to walk with a rain jacket. I would say 15 degrees maximum. No sunshine, it's cloudy as you can see. Just walking down the road. Yeah, I would call it rain now, not drizzling anymore. It's a good decision to put on all the thingies in the backpack. The road is funny here, there are uh, quite some cars parking along the road, and it seems people have camped. There even was one cyclist, he had this. Uh, his tent and his bicycle right next to the road. Now, backpack makes a lot of noise this morning. You hear that? Yeah. Don't know what that is. It's always making noises. Yeah. Not so happy with that. I don't know if it's fixable because I mean if it's very full and you you put it very tight on your back and always things are rubbing against each other. Huh? Still I don't know why it has to be that loud. Tell me Tasmanian Tiger why is your backpack so loud? <laughs> Or maybe it's something inside. A frog. Did I pick up a frog? Blind passenger. Okay, on the, this is the dead end road now to the hut over there. I'm just checking how the camping situation is. 
think on that side there's a lot green. <laughs> there's a path going down there. But you never know, eh? There's a lot of wetland here. Could be that you arrive down there and it's all all wet. I have no time to check it out, so you have to do yourself. <laughs> so there's this that hut, I think, Selfjord Hütten or something. A uh, couple of cars here. So it's uh, should be two buildings with bunk beds, and you have to be a member of the uh, hiking association thing here in Norway, and then you can book it and then receive a key I think because there's it's not this there's no ranger or anything there and yeah then you can book it get the key and then show up just for fun I, I checked the uh, for yesterday and for today just for this week how how the booking situation is and was fully booked out <laughs> Camping right next to the hut on this region it doesn't work. It's either forest on that side or well, you have, there are two private houses also. There's one there and there was a white one over there. Uh, the guy was working there. But you can see how camping would be if we continue here. We're leaving the road now and now path through the forest. Okay, it's one hour in now. We're just just a couple of 100 meters behind the hut, but now it's in a big open area here. Huh. I'm 100% sure it's not all wetland, although the path is pretty wet, but there should be a spot where you can camp. My feeling tells me maybe a bit higher. Should be possible. Anyway, quick break here, drinking break, because it's one hour. The rain jacket is off again, rain cover is gone, so my socks can breathe. <laughs> and it's, yeah, uh, 9.30. And we have to catch the ferry at three. And in order to catch the ferry, I think we have to go all the way along this lake and then there's a path going up kind of I'm not exactly sure where but we have to go over that mountain over that pass then on the other side is the Rheinefjorden yeah and we catch a Rheinefjorden ferry this is Selfjord that's the name of the hut I already said Selfjord Oh, by the way, from today's hike is 11 kilometers starting from, from the hut. It will be around 550, almost 600 meters altitude. Uh, yeah, going over there. And supposed to be four hours. <laughs> Uh, I'm not stressed yet. It is 10 a.m. But I really have to catch that ferry. It's just one per day. And if, if I don't, if I miss that one, it sucks. Quite a challenging path, up and down, up and down, rocks, mud. Haven't done many kilometers yet. <laughs> Last break was just over there. The hut was over there. <laughs> Still, <laughs> everything far in the distance. Oh, 
Okay. It was a tough path, definitely. Using hands, many rocks going up and down, forest, tree roots. Really exhausting, fuck. Still not up. <laughs> I have a quick break here. Lake here. <laughs> There's a couple over there camping. Quite late. Quarter past eleven. They're still packing. Oh, but they maybe if they just want to catch the 3 p.m. ferry, then they, they think they can make it. Terrible path along along the lake. Just climbing rocks up, down, jumping. Oh, not making not making any meters here. Okay, it was a tough path. <laughs> now another tough thing. I have to go up there. Started to climb, quite muddy and slippery. So uphill it's okay, downhill this was, would be very bad. I hope it's <clears throat> not so muddy on the other side. I know it's just wishful thinking, <laughs> but dreaming. <laughs> Yeah, made it to the top. Ooh. 1 p.m. Definitely need a break here. Oh, it's not the top yet. To go a bit further that direction, I think. But I will have a quick break here. Yeah. Oh, that's Rhine of Jordan. Yeah. And apparently down there, it's a little red house. I think that's the ferry station where we have to be in under two hours. I'm speed. And of course the path is difficult. Huh. A lot of bouldering there again. The fun thing is it doesn't go directly there. The path goes there first and then goes down there and comes back on the other side. Holy moly. And it is half past one. One and a half hours. Eh, I have doubts. Quite an impressive mountain. <laughs> Path is super steep. Have to go very slow here, slowly here. <laughs> yeah. It's almost two, so I start. Start imagining now or start accepting reality that we we'll probably miss the ferry and we're stuck here then for one day. Shit. So it's 20 to 3 and I now have accepted my faith. I cannot make it to the ferry today. It means 
I'm stranded here for 24 hours. <laughs> there are worse places to be stranded, I guess. I have a beach somewhere there. Is it in the pictures? So, there, there, that way. So, heading slowly down now and then. It's all green here. Should be easy to find a spot to camp. Ah, relaxing now. Have to think then what I how I organize the rest of my trip because clearly I've lost one day now. Happens. So I've decided to not go to the beach, at least not right now. First thing I do now is go up there. <laughs> That's where I have to go up to to get to the ferry station anyway. I will first look there if there's something to camp. And second, I'd like to have some uh, mobile network because there's nothing here. And yeah, I need to check some of some options because of the lost day now to see how I arrange the rest of the trip. Almost at the top, started drizzling. Rain cover on again. So far, no zero mobile network. Okay, new situation. But first, there's plenty of space to camp up here, I would say. Second, uh, up there I met a couple uh, with their parents <laughs> and I told them, oh, are you stranded because you missed the ferry? They said, oh no, there's another ferry at six. And I was like, what? I showed them my the PDF of all the, of the, the timetable, which says, yeah, three is the last one. But then they showed me their booking. They had a booking for the ferry, which says six. <laughs> So I'm going to the uh, ferry place now and see if there's any ferry at six and if there's space for me and my backpack because, yeah, you know, <laughs> it's raining and I'm a good weather camper. So it's a cool spot, but I prefer being in the dry. <laughs> It takes so long, this whole day, this whole section, it's just climbing over rocks, slow, slows you down the whole time, uphill, muddy, slippery, downhill, muddy, slippery, so it's, it's crazy. I'm really exhausted, feet hurt, because they're still with wet socks <laughs> since eight hours or something. I don't, yeah, they will look horrible later. I really hope there's space on the boat. Yeah. Oh, doggo. <laughs> okay, made it to the bottom. It's one hour until the hopefully existing ferry arrives. Let's see if there's a shelter somewhere. It's still raining.
yeah, I'm in Rheine now. Ah, interesting change of plans. Uh, I only had one choice when I entered the ferry and there was Rheine. He was going back to Rheine. So actually my choice was then at uh, before I entered the ferry, okay, do I want to stay here until the next day, 3 p.m. and catch the ferry? So white camp somewhere in the rain. It was raining a lot when I was there, now it's drizzling rain again. Yeah, shall I white camp there for 24 hours, lose the whole day, or take the ferry to Rheine? I did the last thing. So, yeah, hello, I'm in Rheine now. Uh, between is Rheine Bringen, uh, the local mountain here. Yeah, what a change of plans. Uh, I will stay here one night, obviously not at the campsite. I uh, found kind of a hostel room again. Yeah, it's, it's a room, cheapest, cheapest available. Yeah. Now I have to figure out my my plans. The decision was, was already done, kind of, um, when I decided to get on the ferry. Yeah, because I could have stayed over there somewhere uh, and camped there, but it was raining cat and dog, cats and dogs in that moment. I was really, 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 really tired. So, long story short, I really wanted to go to Rheine and warm up my feet and yeah, just warm up, get dry. Everything was wet. You know, I'm a I'm a good weather camper. And so whenever it rains and I have to camp, then I find I find a way out. No, but honestly, um, if I had stayed there and camped there, uh, the next ferry would have been 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. That's that's a big loss of of time. Yeah. I'm like, I wouldn't even know what to do there. Just just camp and then check out the beach yeah, and then walk around a little bit and, and sleep and sleep and hang out. It's a bit boring, I imagined. It's also uh, national parks. I was not allowed to, to let the drone fly. And yeah. As you can hear and see, it started raining a bit more again. Uh, weather forecast is it's raining like, like this until tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, so I'm happy I don't have to camp this night. But anyway, uh, the choice was waiting there until 3 p.m., take the ferry and then continue the hike. Yeah, it would have worked, but still I couldn't have finished it. Yeah? Um, not, not the normal itinerary because one day it was gone. So I picked this option to stay warm, have a nice evening, enjoy my vacation. And I still cannot fulfill, yeah, fulfill the suggested itinerary of the Lofoten crossing, but I will do my own version of the Lofoten crossing, I would say it. So I will end it, I will go to R. Um, just have to figure out the details. At the moment, my spontaneous idea is um, take a bus tomorrow morning to Moskenes. Uh, there's a campsite. And from there, I can hike into the, the mountains uh, towards Munkebu, that area, and wild camp there. And then come back, and on the way back, uh, touch the most southern point of the Lofoten crossing, the township of A. <laughs> it's just an A with a, with a circle on top. I don't know how to pronounce it. And then walk back to Moskenes. So it's day after tomorrow. And then take the bus back to Svolve and then airport and so on. That's my rough idea at the moment. Sounds good to me. What do you think? 
well, there are no choices, so you have to take it. Uh, yeah, of course, I, I could get up tomorrow morning at, at six and, and hurry up and, and do some crazy hiking. Uh, I won't. I will enjoy the accommodation here and then take the bus someone at 10 or I don't know and then start hiking around lunchtime into the country somewhere over there behind Rheinebringen that direction um, I think rain will have stopped by then if I'm correct the forecast says it's raining until tomorrow morning 9, 8, 9 so if I start hiking at lunchtime it should be fine but the forecast then for tomorrow and day after tomorrow is good so will be good weather while camping <laughs> and I kind of can still show you um, at least that area um, that where I would have hiked through for two, two and a half days on the normal Lofoten crossing if I hadn't missed the 3 p.m. Uh, ferry today. So again, win-win situation. You get to see nice landscapes and good weather narrated by me in a good mood. <laughs> That's your win. And my win is that I can sleep on a nice mattress tonight, dry, dry my boots, uh, do laundry maybe because I have nothing clean. I would be very smelly on the plane next weekend, so I at least need one one clean shirt to not be a complete asshole <laughs> on the on the flight. And yeah, that's my win. What do you say? Deal? Louder! What do you say? Is it a deal? Okay, thank you. <laughs> right, let's head back to Rheine. Uh, I'm going to have a quick snack here at the bistro and then head back to my accommodation and do the laundry. And then sleep. Don't underestimate any of these days here. It's, it, there's nothing easy so far. Definitely having respect of it. I have to be careful. Focused. Focused. Yeah, a big climb. It's a big climb. But the big back. Okay, we start. Welcome to Casa Mazzi this night with the glorious view last night of my Lofoten crossing <laughs> 